Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Final Fantasy VII Remake. This time I'm going to show you how to take down the arsenal in Shinra Tower. I do want to say something very important as a quick note. If you find yourself struggling in this boss fight and you want to restart it from the menu, doing so will bring you all the way back to Rufus. So just like in the original game, Rufus is the save point, and you cannot just restart this individual fight. you got to go back to Rufus. So starting off with the fight... There are three barrier drones that says that ma uh, melee attacks rapidly feel their stagger gauge, but magic and long range attacks have no effect. Unfortunately, Barrett and Aerith are both ranged characters, so Red 13 is the only one who can actually do melee attacks, but you can't control him. And as much as I have loved the game up until this very point, this fight became very frustrating because the only melee person I can't control. So in this uh, guide, you're gonna see me get very, very lucky and Red 13 is going to uh, stagger one of these things and help me take it down way faster than I should have been able to with just uh, Barrett and Aerith. So that will happen. What we need to do is we need to first take out all three barrier drones. So I recommend focusing on one at a time just to try to make it go faster. Uh, they are not weak to any elements. Uh, so lightning damage with Barrett's gun or Aerith's uh, staff auto attacks, they're not going to do any extra damage. That is very, very unfortunate, because they still take a while to get down. Um, they're not even weak to regular magic, not just elemental magic, so you really just gotta take your time with it. Throughout the first phase, and throughout the rest of the fight, really, the boss will use a cannon that, while it's active, will become targetable. So when you see his main cannon begin to glow orange, it's called primary fire, that's the ability, you can then target the cannon and uh, disable it. So that's one way to deal damage to the boss while the barrier drones are active. That said, you can't stand there too long, because if you do, you will get blown up and take a bunch of damage. So you really just gotta peek out of a corner and then uh, you know try to attack it when you can. So you will notice debris all around the room as well as uh, support pillars. This is your opportunity to get into cover and uh, doing so will make it so most of his attacks, or most of the machine's attacks, I should say, cannot hit you. Homing laser can still hit you um, if you're not far or close enough behind the pillar, like you're not far enough away, they can still hit you. And even if you're like kissing the pillar with one of your characters, they can still get hit by homing laser sometimes. So a little frustrating. So the boss is gonna keep casting primary fire. When he does this, if you're able to be quick enough, uh, you can try casting uh, Thundaga on it. The boss is weak to lightning damage. However, when it has the barrier up, it's really not gonna do too much. But if you can target uh, the cannon with, with a spell, then it would be, be a good idea to do that. After a couple of primary fire attacks on a piece of debris, it will break away. So I recommend using uh, the pillars as part of your cover. The pillars cannot be blown up, uh, just the, the piles of debris can. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to keep working on barrier drone B here. And uh, once they all go down, you would think that the boss uh, might go faster. That is not the case though, it will still take quite a while. Uh, so you wanna just keep focusing on the barrier drones and here is Red 13, uh, you know, doing a uh, sidewinder attack and staggering one of the barrier drones and it's gonna drop like a sack of potatoes right now. Boom, like one overdrive killed it. But unfortunately you can't control Red 13 so I don't know what you're supposed to do to make it go any faster. It's very frustrating. <laughs> the fight is like 20 minutes long. Um, I won't talk the whole time. I'll just, you know, try to give you some advice throughout phase one and then once phase two starts uh, I'll give you advice for that and then just cut out. You can watch the rest. So as you can see here, now that we have staggered uh, one of the drones, our summon becomes available and uh, we're not going to use that for a little while, uh, but we are going to keep casting Thundaga on the main cannon whenever possible. Uh, the boss can also use saturation fire and then this is just some standard bullets that uh, the boss will chase uh, whoever he's targeting with so just keep that in mind um, unfortunately this boss it he's always face I say he it's a machine but he's always facing uh, the character that's attacking him for the most part like as soon as he's when he's casting something you can change and, and he won't focus on on that other character but he's always gonna go to whoever he always aggros to whoever's attacking him so that that could be very very frustrating especially when you're trying to get the last couple barrier drones down because when he turns the barrier drones turn and that makes it so uh, Barrett's line of fire obviously he's gonna do significantly more damage than Aerith will Aerith is no slouch but unless things are standing absolutely still uh, it, it's pretty hard for her to, to breathe primary attacker 
because Tempest only works when things are standing still. Um, so that can be very, very frustrating to deal with. Um, if you're going to see that here with the last barrier drone now that two are down. Um, but with this final one still up, you're going to notice that I'm going to have to switch back and forth constantly. And the reason for that is because when the boss turns to face whoever is attacking it, uh, the barrier drone turns as well. And so that third barrier drone is going to be behind him the entire time. So you need to constantly switch between characters, use some range spells. Um, if you want to summon at this point, you can. I don't suggest it. It's not very effective because the boss still has a shield up. Um, but it is going to be uh, quite frustrating to deal with the boss constantly turning around. But it's just something you got to deal with. So he's casting homing laser here. This is a good opportunity to just dump a bunch of damage into the barrier drone. Because, uh, you know, the boss cannot turn while he's attacking. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we can deal some damage to the cannon now that it's uh, bringing up primary fire. Now, see, I haven't even begun to attack yet. And the boss has already stopped attacking Barret <laughs> and started to move towards uh, Aerith. It's quite frustrating. Uh, so we're going to use Maximum Fury. Uh, if you can get the boss to stand still long enough, it's a good idea. As you can see there, most of that damage did go onto the barrier drone. Then the boss turned away. So it can be quite frustrating to deal with this last barrier drone in Phase 1. But we almost have it down. And keep turning around. You can use Homing Laser. Um, it, it is a homing attack. You can't do much to avoid it unless you can stand behind one of the pillars. Uh, from what I have noticed, the, uh, the piles of rubble uh, aren't very effective in uh, dealing with the homing laser because they can sort of arc around it, whereas the pillar they get caught on. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Red 13 is not meleeing these guys like he's supposed to, <laughs> but I really can't control that. Um, I understand why they made Red 13 a non-playable character in this game. You get him so late, and there's no weapon shops around to buy things for him, so I get it. But uh, I just wish they made his AI a little bit smarter in this fight. Um, so once all the barrier drones are down, it's time for phase two. And in this phase, the boss is much more mobile, and it is now weak to lightning attacks. So what I recommend doing is casting Fat Chocobo or even Chocobo Moogle. Uh, they are non-elemental summons, but uh, some of their attacks do uh, have lightning damage. So that can be very effective against the boss. Uh, one thing to note is, and you should have seen this in the scan data from the start of the fight, or if you scanned them on your own using the Assess Materia, the boss can cast an ability uh, called Elemental Defense Protocol. When the boss casts this ability, he is going to become uh, resistant to a particular element. Most likely this is going to be lightning, which is very unfortunate for you because it's going to take you 10 times as long to take down the boss when he's resistant to lightning. Uh, it's really, really frustrating. As you can see here, I have lightning and elemental linked on Barrett's weapon. Everything is dealing bonus elemental damage, so it's just very, very effective to do it this way. He's very weak to lightning, so we're going to do our best to... Uh, to take care of that, do as much damage as possible before he casts that ability. So homing lasers are gonna come in on Aerith, and you'll notice that the boss still has shields around his wheels. You can attack those wheels and try to cripple him, but considering he has a shield, it's, it's really frustrating. So after the boss does a charge, he is able to be pressured. So if you can attack him while he's charging and while he's stopped, you can get the pressure on. So uh, using uh, focus shot, that is huge for building pressure, especially uh, with the bonus elemental damage. Uh, that's you know very, very effective. As you can see there, he just cast Elemental Defense Protocol, so now he's gonna be resistant to lightning attacks. So uh, you can still cast them, they still do damage, but you know, it's not like he's getting healed from it, but you may consider it to be a waste of MP only because uh, it's not dealing as much damage as it should. So our Fat Chocobo here is gonna use his ultimate ability. He's gonna sit on the boss for a second. Deal a whole bunch of damage, he's gonna fall asleep. Only dealt 792, which is reduced, because, uh, you know, the shield is up. So the boss is gonna use homing laser again. It's a good opportunity to hide behind the debris, uh, heal up, and, uh, you know, just kind of resume attacking once once it's done. So as you can see there, like I mentioned, the, the lasers are able to arc around the debris, so it's not the most effective thing to do. Boss is gonna charge, and then we're gonna try to use Thundaga on the boss. It's going to be reduced damage. That's okay. It's still uh, critical, but, you know, it's, it is reduced. So, unfortunately, you do just kind of have to wait out this shield. Um, you may want to save your MP for healing abilities and, you know, just do your best to, uh, to to get him, you know, down. All right, so he is pressured here one more time. So we're just going to uh, try to build as much pressure on the boss to stagger him. There you go. And then uh, the shield will automatically break if you'd like. If you do want to attack the wheels, this is a good opportunity to do that because the wheels' shield are now gone. 
So this is a great opportunity to do that. If you, if you want to stop him from being mobile, that's the way you do it. Um, but I just hated how long this fight was, so I just, I just kept leaning into him. Uh, eventually, the boss will uh, put his shields back up. Lightning defense protocol, there you go. Um, I don't believe he has like a, an ice defense protocol or anything like that. I only ever saw lightning, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, obliterating laser is coming. And this is just a more powerful homing laser that lasts way longer. So Barrett's going to take a whole bunch of damage there. Cure him back up. Uh, after you get the boss to about 50% health, uh, it will begin to uh, cast some fire attacks around the room. And they will... The, the fire attacks will sort of be in a V formation. Yep, it's going to happen here. So threat level critical. Uh, the boss has sort of like a Kamehameha wave that comes out. So when that starts happening, uh, you'll notice he's going to start recasting Voltaic Discharge. This is going to arc uh, several more times. He's going to start casting Saturation Fire again. This is the Gatling Gun on, on the left arm there. Uh, but the Elemental Defense Protocol at this point should be broken. So you can resume casting uh, your Lightning Attacks. So he's going to keep casting Secondary Fire. He's going to charge. And then he is going to bonk into the wall. And then we could start you know, just shooting him some more. We'll take Discharge on Aerith. Eventually he's going to start casting these flame attacks that uh, force you into a certain path. So uh, you, you do want to make sure that when those flame attacks start coming out, you really you want to try to prioritize healing in a way. Uh, and the reason for that is because his next couple attacks are going to be mostly unavoidable. Uh, so that is very, very important. All right, so here comes physical defense protocol. Yeah, so this is the pulse cannon. He has physical defense protocol up. So when physical's up, which is the yellow one, you want to try to use more magic. Uh, lightning is the blue one, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but really, no matter what, everything's going to be reduced when physical is up. And it's quite frustrating. So he's going to blow up this right here. That breaks the next piece of debris. And then he's going to cast Firewall. So this is that flame attack I was talking about. He's going to cut the floor into a V, and you cannot pass these uh, flame barriers. He's going to recast Voltaic Discharge. Do your best to avoid those. And at this stage of the game, the pillars are not going to save you anymore. He can break those using uh, his big blue beam, so you do have to keep that in mind. I tried escaping here. It didn't work. Uh, just make sure you have Steel Skin cast on Barret. Um, primary Fire is coming. This is a good opportunity to use an Overcharge on the weak spot. Get out of the way as best you can. It's going to be hard unless you can get behind a pillar. Um, but yeah, he's going to take about 1,100 damage from that. Charge one more time. Roll out of the way. He's going to bonk on the wall. And yeah, we're just going to keep leaning into him. About 13 minutes into the fight, it's, it's an 18 minute fight, so only a few more minutes left. At this stage of the game, there's not a whole lot else to say. Um, the boss just takes a lot of damage. Really, that's really all it is, he just takes a lot of damage. He has an annoying shield that comes up all the time, so you do just have to kind of deal with it. And just it's really a, a fight of attrition, and just making sure that you can constantly pay attention to what you're doing, keep your MP levels high, Keep everybody healed uh, and just doing your best to get past the frustration of the boss taking a long time. Uh, do your best to build his stagger meter. Focus shot is, is really good for that. Um, that can stun him a lot of times. It's not always a guarantee, but it's probably the most uh, stun inducing ability that you have at this point. Uh, if you have the level two limit breaks from the uh, Don Corneo or Don Cornero uh, battle arena, you can go ahead and use those. It's gonna be very, very effective. Um, if he has the physical defense protocol up, uh, they will still kind of uh, almost get ignored in a way, like the limit won't deal as much damage. I just had some unfortunate timing there. Uh, so from what I've noticed is when these uh, flames come out and, and they're cutting the room in half, basically, or, you know, kind of like cordoning you off into, into an area, only one character is affected by this. So maybe a good opportunity to switch to that other character and, uh, you know, just battle with them for a while like we're about to do here so again red 13 just running around i don't even know if he's doing anything in this fight it's, it's a little frustrating to have red 13 here not doing anything he's attacking the wheels i don't know it's i wish you could at least direct him who to attack if you can't control him fully now one thing that i do want to mention though is you might have noticed that in the um in the last v fire section when bear was kind of in the alleyway of fire you might have noticed that in the right side of the screen, it said 3,000 to 5,000 steps, and that is for the pedometer materia. And I'm, I'm sort of burying the lead here with this hint, but I just want to mention it because it just came up and you may be wondering, what is that materia for? 
If you get all 5,000 steps, the materia changes into an AP plus materia. And if you uh, link that materia with another piece of materia, it doesn't matter what it is, it will get double AP growth. So once you get pedometer, make sure you equip it. Um, I didn't know that until a friend told me because I actually unequipped it after this fight thinking this is useless, I don't need this. But it is one of the best materia in the game, especially if you're trying to get the platinum and you want to level all your materia. Very effective. Keep your pedometer on at 5,000 steps, it will change into AP+. All right, so the boss has effectively destroyed three of the four pillars. He's got about 30 to 40% HP left, so the physical defense shield uh, will be dropping here. And then we can start dealing some serious damage to him again. He's going to cast Pulse Cannon another time. Going to run behind this broken pillar here. And then with Barret, since he's not going to be affected, we can go ahead and target the boss from the behind. And it's not going to do any bonus damage or anything, but uh, it will be helpful. So then we're going to cast Lazara on it. It's going to go all the way to the corner. Lazara cast. It's going to explode. And now the pressure meter can start building again. The defense shield is down, so everything is going to build a decent amount of posture. We can do focus shot. Stagger the boss one more time, and now we can start dumping some serious, serious damage into it. With Aerith, we're going to cast Sorcerer's Storm. This will count as lightning damage, as you can see there. Tons and tons of weakness damage. So make sure you keep that up, cast it again, and then uh, we're just going to keep laying into him here. He is going to put the Ice Defense Protocol up, so now we don't want to cast Blizzara anymore. This is really helpful for us because it means that we can start casting lightning damage all the time, and he's not going to be resisting all of our physical attacks, so very, very helpful that this is happening. So, that last uh, main attack took about 1,500 health off of Barret, so we want to cure him up to full, and uh, the boss is just going to keep using the main cannon over and over and over at this point. Uh, he will slice up the room another time, and then he's going to be charging up his uh, blue beam uh, that one last time, and when he's doing that, you kind of have to kill him right there, otherwise, uh, you, I don't think he'll die, but uh, you're going to be seriously screwed. <laughs> he's going to deal a ton of damage to you. So, this is that last V section here. As you can tell by a cutscene, this is an important moment. Boss is going to begin to cast Cry Havoc, and then what you want to do here is charge up your ATB and do as much lightning damage to him as you can. We can get behind this final pillar here, and then the boss will blow it up, and then we can resume attacking. So as you notice, the flames have not gone away in this last part, so we need to do our best to dump as much damage into the boss as possible. Luckily, he has no defense protocols up, but he will begin to charge Cry Havoc one more time. So luckily, this is when Red 13 decides to wake up and start going nuts on the boss, which is super helpful. So we're going to get there to ATB filled up one more time, and then we're going to use Focus Shot, and that's going to be it couple more attacks and the boss is down so it's a really long fight it's about 20 minutes the defense protocols can become quite frustrating but unfortunately you got to deal with it but that's it if you guys have any questions please feel free to leave a comment i'll do my best to help you out if you're looking for more guides for final fantasy 7 remake please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live you can also join my new community discord the link for that is in the video description below if you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I'm coming! This one's for you! Get ready!